Welcome to Pug TV. It's Memorial Day, and uh, I'm Jadrian playing some Memorial Day Star Trek. I've been on a Star Trek kick lately, and because I got my level 50, I worked at it, got to level 50, got my ship, and uh, yeah, Eagle Claw. Um, the other day, she had mentioned that at level 50, you don't get a uh, a free ship like you do all the other milestones in your career and I was a little disappointed I was like well that kinda stinks so when she said you gotta buy it I didn't know what she meant with uh, the cryptic points so when you hit 50 if you want to get yourself a nice nice ship you either have to have um, I don't know all the ways but cryptic points to purchase it uh, and there's Eagle Claw in the pug pen. Yes, I hit 50 earlier today. Woo! So either buy it with your cryptic points. I earned one as a Christmas event, so I got one for free. Possibly someone can give you one. Turn in a whole bunch of dilithium for crypt cryptic points. So there's a few ways to get one, but there's no free one. But luckily, I had my free one. So yes, I'm excited. Yeah, so... Uh, that's what I thought we would do today. As I just kind of, I was like, well, you know, what what should I do with my ship? I took it out and I started some Borg missions, and it's interesting because the level of play once you progress past the your first 45 levels or so, once you hit the Borg levels, um, yeah, your class is you can exchange tons of dilithium. Yeah, it takes a lot of dilithium to exchange for cryptic points. So, um, I would say one thing, this would probably be one of those rare times where like I would actually go ahead and just pay for a ship. I mean, you figure it's worth it. Of all the time that I've had invested and fun, I have to say, it has not been a chore now that I have a better understanding of the game mechanics, my duty officers I understand, how to train my crew I understand now. And so, with that enjoyment I've gotten out of the game, uh, purchasing a ship would not be, I think, an unreasonable expectation. Just luckily I had one. But uh, the gameplay, though, now that I'm in the Borg missions, it's a lot different. A lot of the earlier missions were simple. They were like, you know, like you would have in any other game. Fly here, pick this up, deliver it here. Uh, but now they're a lot more epic in scope. It's actually very cool. In fact, even I believe it's the last mission of the uh, Cardassian storyline is also very, very epic. So um, it's very cool. Hey, Miller Light, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, Eagle Claw says the exchange rate is 300 dilithium points for one cryptic point, and most level 50 ships are 2,000 cryptic points. So it's pretty pricey. I know I was trying just to convert over and get like 200 cryptic points so I'd have I think like 300 or so there, there was something I wanted to buy but yeah I just don't have near the amount of dilithium so what's nice is there's a lot of replayability uh, even though I'm now hit the end game with my crew officers completing missions and earning dilithium points I could conceivably in time actually convert enough dilithium over to do either another ship or get more crew people um, so there's just there is a lot of things that you can do from here on out there's your task force missions you can do so your gameplay is quite a bit different at 50 I know some people are going to be disappointed you know you hit 50 and then that's it for character progression especially if you start out new like I did and then if you just stick at it like I believe Eagle Claw even she just um, was able to get from the first level of gameplay to 50 in just a matter of weeks so we're, we're sooner everybody progresses up pretty quickly if you just go through your episodes so mm, once you hit 50 they gotta have something otherwise it's kind of a lost cause that's one reason I really like the player made missions anyhow uh, and then uh, Eve Claw says there's a lot, of, a lot of 50 missions where you can get a good amount of dilithium What's nice, though, I'll have to say, one thing I was a little hesitant about hitting level 50 was I was saying to myself, well, once I get my ship, then I'm at the end game content, and if I've completed all the missions, you know, 
I really wanted to have my cool ship when I do a lot of these in-game missions. Well, fortunately, if you do a good balance of the uh, crew missions and other stuff along the way, I was actually able to hit level 50 and get my cool ship right at the beginning of the Borg missions, which I think they have those ranked at like level 46. So I actually have quite a few missions now here at the end where I'll have my better ship and I'll eventually to get better equipment to upgrade it more. So I'm pretty excited. Oh, Eagle Claw says that uh, she leveled up pretty quickly, uh, but she caught a double experience month and she's out on medical, so she has plenty of time. So lots of time. Uh, so I thought what I would do is just to give an example of what one of the uh, Borg missions. So this would be like a big spoiler night. You know, if you're playing, if you're not playing or whatever, they give you just a chance to kind of see what some of the higher, higher stories are. I, I might replay. Yeah, I'll I'll save it. There was one mission. I'll tell you, it's my absolute favorite here. I'll show you here. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in. Let me show you my favorite one here. Uh, let's do play. Oh, there's my my crew peoples. I even figured out how to get more more uh, duty officers for free. I didn't realize it at first, but there is a mission you can do. You send out one of your high-ranking officers, if you will. It takes like two days, but if they succeed, then you get some free duty officers. And then I even completed a mission where I got some duty officers and stuff. So um, that's good. <laughs> I like having duty officers now. Okay, so I'm looking at my missions. I'll, I'll show you my favorite one. I'm not going to run through it, but it is definitely worth getting up to. It is this one here, Boldly They Rode. I don't want to say too much about it except for it had elements in it that I totally was not expecting, and it was very unique mission experience of all the missions I've done in here it had stuff that I never had even imagined that they could do in the game absolutely phenomenally fun it's level 46 so you know if you're just starting out you're gonna have to build up to it uh, but I highly recommend getting up there just so you can try that well worth it Oh. Uh, Let's see here. Negro Claw says that there's also eight missions in the academy where you get du uh, new duty officers every three days. I'll have to look at that. Are you talking about when you go down and do like a? Um, is it one of these like this a sector? If you go down there and do the sector mission, or is it a different different type of mission? Is it something you actually pick up from somebody that you talk to? Because I need to know. Because I like to pick up duty officers now. That's like my new hobby. Just people you talk to. All right, so I'm going to have to, yeah, check that out. Because um, I've actually found the duty officer system is actually pretty good. I'm slowly figuring out. Not an expert, but am learning. Uh, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll probably come down there. Maybe I won't run a mission. <laughs> I'll show you some cool stuff. Well, here's something I, I read and I didn't quite know at the time, but what's so cool is if you look at your duty officers, and this is if you're just starting out, this is good. Like I've got a, a low-level person that I made just so I could get her a free ship. I, I didn't want to waste the opportunity to get the free ship back last Christmas, so. I got a new person I can build up, but it'll be a much better experience because I know what to do now. Anyway, um, what I didn't know was if you click on one of your duty officers, it doesn't seem to be on the civilian ones, but you got these duty officers, and some of them have skills. Like this guy has a skill, a specialization, energy weapons officer for space, and he has a chance to reduce the time for any subsystem targeting attack to recharge after use. Now, this guy, he's going to be able to run missions, but if he has like a really cool space ability like that, you can put him on the active duty roster, if you will, and then his little buff is applied to your ship. 
Now he comes off your list of officers able to run missions, but I've actually got a couple down here that I've put on active duty um, for modifying my combat. Like I've got one that has a chance of like taking two seconds off of your pro torpedo projectile attack so it recharges quicker. I have some for my ground combat where um, if I use a certain ability there's a small, well actually it's one of the medical ones and if she uses a hypo spray or medical tricord or something like that but if she uses one of those healing abilities there's a chance that she will summon down a medic from the ship who will follow your group around for a short amount of time healing. You know just some really cool stuff like that which is also very very cool. And Eagle Claw she says you can assign five up to space and five uh, up to five for ground duty and so like I've got six out of my ten assigned so I haven't assigned one to everything yet but one day I'll have a nice good amount of officers I'll have my active duty slots filled and still have enough that I can uh, send out on missions so duty officers have turned out to be actually very very useful just gotta play with the system a little bit but it's actually very very cool and the other thing I finally learned, and I'll share this with my crew, and I, t I had that this was super frustrating, and I don't know why it took so long for it to click in my mind. I'd even asked like Eagle Claw and Cynic, and and was just trying to understand, and they were like, well, you know, just buy this skill and assign it. And it finally took me a while to realize, you have to promote your officers. They can't do anything if you don't promote them. I don't know why that took forever for me to learn because if you go down to the earth or uh, the Sol space station and talk to the skill trainer there you know I can see that I can give these people their captain skills and I'm thinking well I'm an admiral yeah I can have captain skills on my crew so I could buy them stuff but they could never use them because they were never promoted and so when you're looking at a station I'd have like have like these two empty spots and this guy, I bought him four skills and were never showing because I never promoted them. I didn't even know you could do that. So I just kind of looked at my different uh, stations, how many slots they had based on your ship, and would put an officer, and I'd say, okay, that officer's got four uh, slots at that particular station. I need to promote this guy up to, I think it's commander. Then I can give him the appropriate skills that he needs in them slots so it it's easy just promote your people and then you'll actually be able to buy skills for them and swap them out and put put them at the proper console put the officer with the right rank at the right console and you can get them what they need yeah and then uh... Euclaw says yeah lol they can't use commander skills if they aren't commanders i mean go figure because i was like why wouldn't they promote as you go up? See, I thought that was automatic, but no, you actually have to do it. And it kind of makes sense uh, because as you play, you're earning points that you can spend on your crew's skill training, and it actually is important to have an eye on that because every time I retrain a skill after I've spent a bunch of points, I mean, I'm technically losing skills. So it it's a good way for you to just really fine-tune your crew so just remember promote them then buy the skills they need based on the station that you want it's real easy real easy uh, here we go and then uh, she says on the stations tab you can set your standard away team so you can put what bridge officers you want to always have with you for your team instead of it being random each time you beam down luckily though like right here on the stations tab Here's what she's talking about. You can set your standard away team. So far, my away team has pretty much always been the folks I want. So I've I've been lucky there. But yes. So for example, like I always like I could just set it right now. Uh, there it is. Like this is the loadout. I always take these folks. And thing is, just remember, every time you get a new ship you have to come and reset these so every time you get yourself uh, a promotion up to a different starship you're gonna have to reassign your station crew and the away team um, but it only takes like a second so very very cool 
I haven't even felt like promoting anybody else because I've just fallen in love with these folks. So this is like, this is my Spock and all them folks right there. So very, very cool. Now the only, uh, I guess I can leave that, the only other thing really that I'm going to have to spend time with, I mean it's not hard, it's just a matter of looking at equipment and kind of seeing which one has better stats, is just that understanding equipment good enough so I know I'm picking the right gear for my ship. For instance, what's neat here, and I haven't I haven't looked anywhere, but I've got some Jim Hadar equipment. And I really need to go and find another piece. But it looks like there's a three piece set I can get for my ship. And I really don't know if there's any big bonuses for having all three pieces. Like with my main character for Jim Hadar gear, he's got all three pieces and I really didn't see if it gave anything special for having an item set but I thought it would just be cool to wear everything that I earned on those Jim Hadar missions so but um, yeah the game game works so much better that now that I understand duty officers and uh, the stations and crew assignments it's not difficult just remember to promote your people once you promote your people you're set Ah, and Eagle Claw says, says, yes, they do have set bonuses. And I just see, that's the thing is I'm not not an expert enough at understanding equipment to see exactly what my bonus is. I got part set, Jim Hadar armored, so I have all the pieces. I'm just not seeing what to get. So there might be an implied bonus. Um, I just need, just haven't seen it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it says read the comment about ground abilities that will help the ground missions. Oh, I think I get it. Like you get a shroud, and if you have the second piece, the a Jim Had Hadar shroud, and if you have all three pieces, you get a combat triage sub subroutine. Maybe that's what that's meaning. Oh, the common a couple up. I lose track. Uh, let's see here. And oh, this is a good one. Uh, and if you promote all of your people up to commander they will use all four of their ground abilities even if you can't use all four of their space abilities oh yes that's very very true and I haven't promoted every single person up to use all their ground abilities even though it would limit their their space performance it's just because I've recently figured out how to do it and I didn't feel like standing in front of the skill guy for a couple more hours to get it all set up but that's important um, even though your ship has limited slots stations. Um, even though you have limited slots, they get four ground abilities regardless. So it doesn't hurt to promote them all to commander just so you have a super robust ground fighting force. Good tip. Okay, and those abilities at the bottom of the set. So um, referring to here. So I get my Jim Hadar shroud, armor, um, personal shield, and then a shroud, which actually does work. It's like a little stealth thing, because I've noticed quite a few times in battle I'll be running around, and I think, I'm not quite sure what triggers it, but every once in a while my guy just turns invisible. Then I run around, and as soon as I start shooting, you know, I'm visible again, but it is pretty cool. And combat triage subroutine. I don't see like an ex, ex description of what exactly the subroutine does. Okay, she does say it's triggered by damage. But Hack Benjamin says, "Are you about to run something? I'm excited to see your new ship in action." Okay, I will run something. Here, let me just show you. This is the Jim Hadar shielding that I put on my ship, which is the purple glow. Normally, I've got the standard Enterprise blue. But this Jim Hadar stuff is kind of like a purple theme for some reason. So I've got uh, this purple glow. I'm also trying to get used to this layout of some of my new skills. As you level up, 
it took me a while. I had to hit the P key, but I have like all kinds of skills so I can customize my skill tray. So it's taking me a while to kind of get used to all my new crew skills and all these skills that I've earned that I can use with my character for combat. So every once in a while I'm over here trying to find the appropriate skill I want to use while I'm getting you know, pummeled and it's kind of a whoops. Uh, let's see here. I'll take a look at the uh, the duty officers later. Eagle Claw. I think I'm gonna run just a little bit of a mission because I'm not gonna be on super late tonight, being a holiday and all. So I'll probably just uh, run here a little mission. Okay. See, I think this guy's running the ship that I have, but he doesn't have the purple. Just for comparison here. Yeah, actually. Uh, Hack Benjamin says it, it looks kind of fast, and actually, yeah, I think that guy is running the ship that I have. He just doesn't have the purple effects applied. I got the ground effects special. I turned mine into a low rider. Oh, he just disappeared. And actually, this is a surprisingly quick and nimble craft. I'm surprised at how good this thing moves. Very surprised. Well, actually, yeah, Eagle Claw, why don't you go ahead and show me, if you don't mind the duty officers, because that, that'll be quick. That'll just be a quick jaunt down to to Earth real quick, and you can show me those missions, and then I'll run something uh, so people can see my new ship. And I want to show you the cool new thing about my ship. Yeah, let me come to the Academy. Let's pull up the map here. I'm not going to do the, the easy warp method. I want to show you the, the fun method here. I should be, I'm like way down here. Let me go to, I wonder if I have to do the conduit. I probably have to do the warp conduit. Let's see if I can go. Yeah, I do. All right, so I'm gonna have to, I think I have to warp back. Does this have, Pelia. Where's Pelia connected to? I don't want to go to Pelia. Okay, transwarp to Sirius Sector. All right, let me. Re I finally got this really cool ability, and I don't know when I actually got it. With my luck, I probably had it for a while, and I'm just now noticing it. Okay, so let me see if I can go up to Sol from here. All right, so let me get lined up, and I'll show you this. I've seen lots of other people have this, and I always wondered, how did they get this? And here's my special. It's called the Advanced Quantum Slipstream Drive. And it actually does speed you up when you're traveling like from sector to sector. So those times when I'm trying to keep up with folks and they're always going quicker than me, I can kind of zoop across a map a lot quicker. Yeah, Eagle Claw says it's the slipstream drive. It puts you at speed 70. Yeah, I've seen people have it all the time, and I don't know when you actually pick it up. I just didn't realize and look at all my different skills until I got my level 50 and was just poking around. So I may have had this actually for a few levels. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, Eagle says you do get it at 50. All right, so I wasn't missing out then. And there we are. Yeah, just, it's awesome. Okay, yeah, show me my duty officers, and then tonight I'll go back to Earth and <laughs> start setting up duty officer missions. Yeah, see, I'm seeing some of these ships here. Some of these ships are the... Uh, you had to buy with cryptic points. That one's 2000. So this one here, this was the latest version of the Enterprise ship from the, I guess, apparently the last Next Generation movie, I think they said, or one of the movies. And uh, they gave this away for free at Christmas, and it it just looks really cool, I think. It's awesome. All right, let's go down to Starfleet Academy. Beam down. officers 
Yeah, I'm waiting for, I have a couple of duty officer missions running I'm waiting to end. I have an officer that I want to put on active duty. Nala, I will match her level. Which is weird because I think we're both 50. Uh, but anyway. Okay, where There she is. Hello. Oh, there she goes. Yeah, I'm actually wearing some armor today. Oh, this is the person. First one is Vulcan Personnel Officer. Oh. Is that what that symbol above their head is? Because if I know that's the symbol, I'll remember them. All right, so let's let's talk to her. Vulcan Cultural Exchange. Give me some Vulcans. I even picked up some Jim Hadar soldiers and put them on my ship. Okay. So, dang it. I guess because she's already out running one. I can't. Oh, here we go. Never mind. Start assignment. Never mind then. Okay, so there's a Vulcan one. Got it. What's next? <laughs> oh, Eagle Claw, I had a comment on YouTube. <laughs> And one of the people said, who's that child that plays with you? Ha, that's no child. That's Nala. Oh, there's somebody hiding way back here. Whoops. Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny. I said, that's no child. Just because her weapon is larger than she is. Oh man, this guy really doesn't want to be found. Sprint. Ooh, I hope that's two. Yes! Oh, I love duty officers. I tell you, it is fun. First, I thought they were annoying, but actually, I like them now. So we have an Andorian. Culture exchange. That's okay. Just start the assignment. Perfect. So every three days I can talk to these folks. Got it. Start assignment. Alright. Okay, they're set. I got those. Wow, that's potentially a lot of crew you can build up. But... Eagle Claw was pointing out to me though it's cool because one you have a hundred slots for active these active duty folks and then um, you can actually trade up I think uh, if I remember right she was saying it's at like an exchange rate of like five to one so you can like take five of your common folks and trade them in for one decent folk so at some point uh, you can start trading them up Okay, he just tells you about them, so I don't want that. Personnel officer. Submit request. Oh, you know, I guess I could actually request all of them. See, I guess I've already done a request for some, but we'll just request all of them. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yep. See, when I saw it, my mind was thinking something different. So the lady right here in the main base, the Vulcan outside, and then those two in the back. That's eight. Uh, let's see. Speed with her and then check the shipboard tab. Okay. Now, how do I check to see how they're coming along, though? That's, that's the thing for me. How do I know? Uh, that's this. Kumar, right here. So my cadre's got 12 hours left. Culture exchange has 19 hours left. 
I hear 22 a day and 23 hour or yeah a day and 23 hours yeah there she goes she says once you get full talk to her again and select reassign underperforming and you can exchange for a better quality officer at five to one and the better quality officers are cool because the better caliber officer you have the better your rewards and the more likely they'll survive some of these missions and it is kind of silly to to see one of these missions go and fail <laughs> you know you lose like your bartender to something silly Eagle Claws lost her favorite bartender before just on a silly mission but um, you know higher quality folks you're gonna get better results better rewards when they succeed and here's some of your different rewards that you would get so this development experience hmm, not quite sure bridge officer skill points skill points development XP not quite sure how all that works but I know you want it and then your dilithium of course green and better never die they just go to sick bay Ow. like Vikings they just go to Stovokor like Klingon Vikings I was trying to make a cross-cultural reference but okay cool and then there's my department heads which I should probably promote all them to the highest Ew, operations huh I should probably spread the love around a little bit better pick your first officer I should probably make my first officer a higher rank than what she currently is hopefully if you give if you make them higher ranking they do better recommendations I don't know this is something I haven't really spent much time with either because I don't know if it's good to have one person be in charge of science and medical and one person in charge of tactical and security or spread it around and then just promote them all I'm not quite sure you can also pick up a quick quest here for 480 dilithium ooh yeah where's that I love dilithium because I eventually want to turn that into cryptic points to buy stuff Ew. Is this the quiz one? You have to answer questions. I was never very good at this. Yeah, histories. Ugh. I suppose I could work on them. I'm sure the answers and questions change all the time. <sighs> Talk to the commander, then get a data chip from the computer. Okay, I'm afraid. All right, so I'll do history 101. All right, get a data chip. All right, we'll put it in the machine. Ah, she would give me the answer. So maybe the questions do repeat after a while. How do I make this thing work? Let me exit her. All right, computer library. So I'm going to get some skill points, some bridge officer skill points. Now these skill points, even though I'm not going up in skill anymore, I still want these bridge officer skill points. So as I promote my main ground crew, I have enough points to develop all their skills up. So I still want that. Okay, so data chip, continue. Resolve the mission. Oh, I guess that means I studied. All right. Uh, here comes the test. Okay. Does she give me the test? Okay, where do I go take the test at? Right over here. At the test terminal. Great. Test your knowledge. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Okay, so path to 2409. Who lost the campaign for Praetor after Tal Aura's death? I think it was this one, Sela. She must have these written down in her notes. I was right. I picked Sela. This would be a way for me to test my knowledge. But that was it? 
That was one question? Holy cow. Gee whiz. I hope I don't have to turn it in after each question. Hopefully that was it. Oh my gosh. Why haven't I been doing those for the past year or so? Dang. I can do it once a day? That's like a give me. Alright. Well, now you know where I'll be every day. And that's cool because if you're not familiar with the whole dilithium crystal exchange thing, I'm just going to show you real, real quick. So, for example, first of all, I have my assets tab. And I get all this ore, and then I want to refine it. And there's like um, a limit to how much you can refine in a day, but it's like I can do at least 7,000 a day, and I don't have that much at any one time, so every day you're limited to how much you can do. So anyway, I now have 20,000 of this ore. Yeah, she says like 8,000. It's, it's a huge amount, huge amount. Yeah, it's like 8,000 total. So then once you have your, ta-da, dilithium, you have the store, dilithium store. And then you got ground items, ship and space items, special items and whatnot. So then, well, I think that's just spinning it. There's actually a conversion thing somewhere I thought, a place where I can convert it. Let's look at ground items. No, that is just using your dilithium. Buy dilithium. Well, if you pull up the dilithium exchange window here, this is this is the part where you then get to see how much it costs for you to convert dilithium over to cryptic points. And it's on like some sort of market rate. I've seen these numbers have changed. And so right now, the lowest they have is 311 of your dilithium for one cryptic point. And right now they have, under that exchange rate, there's 3,449 cryptic points available. So if you do like a little calculating out, you can kind of figure it out. Or what I did here, like I, I could say, well, I want 200. And then right down here it does the math. It says, well, I would need 62,000 dilithium if I want 200 cryptic points. So if I wanted 2,000 cryptic points, so I could go buy one of those cool ships. I would need 622,000 dilithium. So here's the thing. Yes, that's a lot. But that allows you to buy premium stuff for free. So technically, you could get whatever you wanted in the game and never spend a penny. How is that fair to them? I really don't know. But it keeps loyal user base going. All right, Or you could just go to the website put your credit card in, get some uh, cryptic points that way. But I looked at that. You have to buy like uh, special, that's like cryptic zen, and then convert the zen over to cryptic points. And uh, it didn't look like a very good exchange rate because I believe it was like 100 zen for a dollar. And then it was, it took um, like 100 Zen gave you 80 cryptic points or something like that. You're like losing a little bit of money in the process, but um, the fact that I don't pay 15 bucks a month, I'd have no problem every once in a while shelling out $10 a month to get some cryptic points to buy something cool in the game. So hopefully, if enough people have that attitude, that keeps the game going. But otherwise, you can play this forever and never spend a dime and yet get all the premium stuff you want eventually. Um sell your cryptic points. And I guess right here is kind of the reverse. I can sell my cryptic points to buy dilithium because they actually do also have a dilithium store where instead of spending cryptic points, you spend dilithium. So they give you two different places for your dilithium. That's pretty good. Not bad. Okay, let's see. Let's run a little mission here. Oh, you still have your title set to lieutenant commander. Oh, well, I'm modest. Do I? <laughs> Is it? Where do I set my title? That's probably why I haven't changed it. Status. Hmm. If 
Vice Admiral. I don't, I don't even know where do I set it at. I really don't know where to set that. <clears throat> Press U. Edit record. Oh, edit record. Oh, look at that. Oh, I must not have touched that since a long time ago. Oh, look. I have a lot of different stuff I could probably pick. No title. I'm modest. It's just me, just Jadrian, just Jade. All right. Well, now that that's been taken care of, let's take a look at some of the missions we have. Now, these episodes are phenomenal for gear and whatnot. Like I said, the early ones are kind of meh. Some of them are kind of meh. Some are kind of fun. But later on, ones are really, really cool. And what's nice is you can go back and pretty much replay all of them except for the very first one of any starting series. Um, but from there on out, it's kind of fair game. And then some of these I just don't remember. And I don't think any one of them is like just strictly space combat or otherwise. So I wonder if maybe... Yeah, let's, let's do this. I'm wondering if maybe instead of running like a mission, if you want to see the cool ship in action, I wonder if it's possible I could do a space mission. Now that I got like a whole bunch, wow. I could probably do this Starbase fleet action. Hey, uh, Eagle Claw, do you want to do a Starbase 24 fleet action for fun to celebrate the 4th, or not the 4th, Memorial Day by blowing stuff up? Sure. Oh, I don't want to do that one. I want to do... Starbase 24 fleet action. So it needed a minimum of five, and we're queuing up. So any moment now, we should get the invite. So. STF fleet actions. Yeah, that's a whole other aspect of the game I have to learn now, too. Is um, they got like fleet actions where if you do them, you can get. There it is, Starbase 24 where if you do certain fleet action type missions you earn fleet action points which then can also be turned in for like special gear and equipment so once you hit 50 that's not the end of it all there's still quite a bit you can do the other thing I want to learn too I haven't figured out is how to do a saucer separation I saw Cynic do it once and that would be cool alright now this isn't probably going to be a real good way to show you how cool the ship is since there's going to be so many people out here fighting but it will be fun just to watch us all fly around and shoot stuff I did pick up some pretty neat little abilities that I might be able to use while I'm out here oh carrier got in the way alright so let's come up here Bird of prey is in range. Oh, there's some fighters down there. There we go. Can't reach all that stuff. Engine batteries, that's not cool. some of these people out. I should probably 
zoom up a little bit just so I can get in there. Alright, now let's start mixing it up. Some of this stuff dies pretty quick. Alright. There we go. I haven't even tapped into my special abilities yet. Ooh, a bunch of bird of praise. Alright, so with that many, I might actually use some shield regenerative stuff before too long. Use my... Oh. That's right, I had to redo my ship. I lost a tactical slot, so I don't have one of the... Oh, there it is. This one I like. Gives me a, a damage bonus. Ah, oh, there's some stuff up here I can shoot at. Let's come up here. My goodness. This group is just killing stuff. Okay. Negvar Warship. Let's work on that one. It hardly seems fair for these Klingons. Oh, I passed on something. <laughs> I didn't even see that I had an opportunity to roll on something. Alright, let's turn so I can try and keep it within range. And hit the next one. Yep, I absolutely love being a beam boat. This has worked out pretty good. I have thought about spending the money to pick me up a um, an actual assault ship, but I just so love the cruisers. Hello, what is that? Sure, why not? Not bad. We got a really good group in here. Yeah, there's someone down here. Let's come on down. Oh, we got to defeat one more Klingon and then before we move on to the next part of the mission here. There goes Eagle Claw dropping off her fighters. Let's go. Well, my turning radius, I guess, isn't that tight. Oh, snap. <sighs> Great. Got here just in time for him to... <sighs> wow. See, I was going down there just to pick out, like, one. <laughs> oh, snap. Instead... Be like spawn right, right into a whole bunch of them. Okay, they're dropping shields, so pop my shields. Auto, auto do shields here. Increase some damage. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Drop a plasma core leak thing that I've got. Okay, feedback, pulse damage. Ugh, too many. I didn't want to, didn't mean to pop down right in the middle of the Klingon Armada. That was not my intention. Oops. Okay, let's respawn. Oh, okay. So we'll join some of these folks up here where it's safe. Okay. Now we're not alone. Now we can work together with somebody. And then hopefully some of my skills regen here quickly. Do a 
beam overload. Oh, I'm taking damage here. I'll do my shields. Reverse shield polarity, I like. Let's drop my plasma, because if they fly through my plasma, they start taking some damage and do feedback. Okay. Shield work. Repair some damage. Okay, let's take out some of these. Ouch. Get away, get away. Okay, good. Repair some hole damage. Oh, there's a bird of prey up there. A lot of times I don't target manually, I just hit my fire all weapons button and it will like pick a target for me. So sometimes I get something that makes sense, sometimes it just starts shooting. Like now. Decided that it wanted an Ing Nigvar warship. Okay. Let's do it then. Good, let's hit one of that, whatever it is, a bird of prey. Sweet. Alright, let's get this big boy. Let's work on you now. And I still think it's totally cool to take down shield arcs that nobody else is working. Because every little bit you do to kill a ship is contributing towards the group because if you're taking down shields um, from an angle that nobody is shooting at then that ship will sometimes divert uh, shield power away to try and you know maximize its coverage I mean so every little bit you do is is weakening him in one way or another so I don't mind circling around and killing him Oh man, we're in the thick of it now. Auto shield, overload beam weapon, do some shield repair there, repair the ship. Ouch, ouch. Come on. <sighs> Went through all my skills. <laughs> Heck, Benjamin says that's that was awesome. I tell you, it is pretty cool. I love these huge epic space battles. I don't know of any other MMO that has has this other than Eve. You know, and Eve is dedicated to that. You know, so I don't think this probably comes to the scale of of Eve and complexity. Um, but this has a charm all its own because it's Star Trek, and it totally blows away the Star Wars. Uh, Old Republic space combat, in my opinion. I just would rather do Star Trek space combat. It just has a an epic feel of its own here. Big capital ships going at it. And a lot of the ships, I don't know honestly how they scale, like if you took them to how they should be, but you do get a sense of big ship, little ships. Light him up. Look at that, I'm just circling around him. I'm like a shark. Alright, we're taking some damage here. Let's take out these big boys there. Ouch. Reverse shield polarity. Reverse shield polarity is like one of my favorite skills. As you take damage, it makes your shield stronger. So you absorb like all the incoming damage and turn it into shield strength. It's awesome. Now we got two on it, but they've already used it once. So every once in a while, I just gotta. Ouch. Ouch. Ugh. 
cooldown timers suck. <laughs> so as you're waiting for stuff, you're like, I can't click any of my shield skills because they're all being, they're all timing. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Let's see if we can hit some stuff on the fringe. So instead of flying like directly into the group, let's see if we can like pick a straggler on the outside here, just work the fringes, work our way in. That might be safer. Like, how dare you attack our buddy? I love that tri cobalt torpedo. If it hits an unprotected shield, it just tears people up. Love it. Okay, let's get another on the fringe here. Let's get him a broadside. There you go. Boom. Okay, there's a warship there. Drop shields. So yeah, I'm gonna see if I can just stick to that. Just stick to the outskirts here and then... Okay, you, not quite the outskirts, but I see you shooting at some of our people. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's nail him. Flying into a group. Let's see if I can grab his attention. Now I've done quite a bit and haven't dropped a shield yet, but it's gonna happen any minute. There we go. Now see as other people start coming in and hitting other shield arcs on this guy, overall his shield power is going to drop dramatically. So I'm actually not too concerned. Oh, and he's dead now. Okay, so let's get out of the middle. I probably won't. Let's go help Pathfinder out here. And since we all work together, it's not like I'm kill stealing. Just whatever it takes to help clear out this mission. We're all working together. Sure, I'll take that. Shield emitter. And that's it. We defeated the Klingons. Yay. For that, I might even shave. This is my weekend look. I've been growing this for a few days now. I'm going to have to do something about that. Oh, there's our buddy. All right, so what did I win? <laughs> a shield... Plus 13 shield regeneration rate. Oh, which is good, because guess what? I had no science count consoles, and now I got one. Shield regeneration power is very important. Okay. 3.2 engine power. Let's see. Shield power, weapon power, troll. Ah. Uh. I'll have to look at that stuff later. What's this? Ooh, a Tetrion. 205, 209. I think mine do better. I don't think I really picked up anything I want to repair or swap out. So I'll probably just end up selling a lot of that stuff. That's what I do with most of it. Yep. And there you have it. Ooh, take items. There's more stuff out here that I could probably maybe pick up to sell before I totally leave. They're going to kick me out of the map in a couple seconds anyway. Well, that was cool, Eagle Claw. That was fun. This pie, I think I probably picked up. Oh, there's something. 
No wonder people left it. This is terrible stuff. They take all the good stuff and then just leave the little cruddy junk for me to pick up. Let's see what that is. Yeah, they need it on all the good stuff and then just left the crap. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Well, that I think will do it. That looks pretty neat. You got all your wings out. Well, let me ask you this. On one of my ships, I, I had picked up some fighters as like a, a reward. And it only had 50 charges in it. Now, your fighter ships on your carrier, are they like unlimited charges but on a timer? So like when one group wears out? Like how do your fighters work? I'm just curious. They kicked me out of the map. Oh, do I have that? Oh, I put it in the bank, I think. Okay, she says she can do one wing uh, per 20 seconds per dock. Okay, that's cool. And then you probably have a limit, yeah, but only two wings at a time. Still looks pretty neat. All right, well, that does it for me. Like I said, it was just going to be a short, short tonight, uh, about an hour, just kind of hanging out. I'm going to go back to reading my Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Which I do that too. Read on occasion. Which is kinda neat. She's got each wing is three ships so I can have a max of six stalkers and six peregrines at any given time. And I remember you saying one of them was like your phaser one and the other one was like your torpedo one. So it's kinda neat so you guys like shoot and drop the shields and the other ones can come in and torpedo them. That must be overwhelming for a lot of ships that you have to face, having a whole bunch of fighters just swarming around it. So that must be very, very cool. Which is why I wanted to try a carrier, so I could just overwhelm them. She goes, yep, the stalkers have Tetrion turrets, which drop shields, and then the peregrines have phasers, which are DPS. Ah, that's what she's got. That's very cool. Yeah, turrets are kind of neat, but I think their range is more limited. I kind of like the idea of 360 degree Tetrion weapons. Or either that or they do less damage. There was something about them, but turrets are very cool. Ah, she's going to link them so I can look at the stats. Which, depending on where she links them, I might have to move this up so you can see them. Yes, I accept. Okay. Let me move this out from behind my my picture. Let's move it up here. Place of prominence. So here's the fighters. I just hover. Oops. There. Oh. Just let me read it. Stop disappearing. Oh, is being argumentative. It won't stay put. It doesn't want me to read it. Click and hold. Oh, I got to click and hold. How quaint. Computer. <sighs> okay. So this is the Peregrine Fighter, Phaser Pulse Cannons, Dual Phaser Cannons, uh, Quantum Torpedoes. Nice. And then you've got the Stalkers. The Tetrion Pulse Cannons, Thorin Device, Anti-Proton Sweep, 
whole signature mask. Did you pick the ships you wanted, or is this just what comes with the carrier, and you just launch out a couple wings each of these? Each hangar supports two deployed wings at any given time. She picked them. Good choices. Launches a wing of three level 51 advanced fighters. Oh, man. Level 51. So that's, that's a higher level. That's like getting swarmed by a whole bunch of level 51 stuff. That's hot. I like that. And there it is. She says there's like six different types you can choose. Now, let me ask, this is personal. You don't have to share. But I'm just curious. When you got your carrier, did you purchase that? Did you go ahead and pay cash? Or did you have dilithium or cryptic points from something? Um, if you don't mind sharing, how did you pick up your carrier? Or if you want just to tell me, you can tell it down in the chat because I'm not showing the chat. The advanced cost dilithium. You use dilithium. Okay, cool. That's a lot. Holy cow. I'm going to have to work on getting dilithium then. Whew. Which, since we're talking about different stuff, I had a duty officer that was a medic. So I got to come down to the medic. And she was on a mission. I don't know if she's done, but I wanted to add her to my ground team or to my medic team. Um, that way, whenever some of my folks use a certain healing skill, she has a chance of sending down. Um, a medic to follow my group around. That's my purple. He's a Jim Hadar guy. Was it her? I think this was her. And she's available. On use of any hypo provides a chance to beam down a medic who will heal you and your allies for a while before beaming back up to your ship. So it's only a 10% chance your person doesn't use hypo all the time, but I was like, oh my gosh, but still, that's a chance, so I'm going to put her on active ground duty. Bam. Now, it takes her out of my running for missions, but that'd be cool. You do a lot of ground combat and have a little, even just a small chance to have an extra person following you around whose sole job is to heal, that can make a big difference. Oh, she says it cost over 500,000 dilithium. It was over 600,000 for the ship and like 20,000 K for each advanced ship. Yeah, they are terribly expensive, but they're very, very cool. The ships, I mean. Let me see here. Dilithium store, ship. Okay, that's just equipment and whatnot. Oh, let me see, consoles. I haven't really looked around because I didn't want to touch my dilithium at all, but they do have... I need science. If I could filter it, bam, there's my filter. Science stations. See, this is the thing. Some of the stuff I don't know what it means. I have to look it up. Like, what are the flow capacitors? No. So that I don't quite know. But there's the the Star Trek online wiki, I should probably go in and read how to use some of that stuff. Uh, she says, if you pay for the ship with C points, it's 2,000, but the advanced ships are still dilithium only. Oh, advanced ones are only dilithium. So, you know, the, the cool thing, though, is if you don't have a whole lot of time to play or like a hardcore raider type person, like in some games, you can just buy the cryptic points and then convert cryptic points into dilithium and buy your ship. So I know some people call that like pay to win, but not really, considering you could eventually get all that for free yourself. It's just a way to expedite that for some people who don't have that play time. So no big deal. Plus, you know, if I play the game, like, let's see, since it's gone free to play, what's that been about like two months? If I wanted, I theoretically could get $30 worth of cryptic points. That's two months at $15 a month. That would be fair. And then purchase in-game stuff. Right? That's fair. So, uh, she goes, I love the carrier, but the turn rate makes you want to put your head through the wall sometimes. 
<laughs> it's just a beast. Well, you know, you would think you don't need a turn rate since your ships do all the turning for you. You're just there to carry the little fighters. You know, but I guess you could get uh, some engineering consoles or something that increase your turn rate, you know. But uh, I like how the fact that each ship has a role and they fulfill those roles the way they're meant to and they kind of replicate slow lumbering hulks and whatnot. Um, it'd be nice if if this was kind of like Star Blazers and my battleship could carry fighters. That would be cool. Then I would be happy. So if they make a game like this for Star Blazers or some such game that has big capital ships and the capital ships carry fighters, I don't know if the one's in EVE. Problem is, EVE, it's a little advanced for me. That's got, um, you know, the way I look at EVE is I'm afraid of that one because that's kind of like the advanced person's game. Maybe not an advanced person's game. I think I'm just afraid of the PvP aspect and I would hate to invest that time to get a capital ship or from what I'm hearing is some ships take the corporation to build and to lose that in combat I mean I'm always freaked out when I read those stories um, you know to that people are losing these big vessels to pirates and things and I'm like oh my gosh you know I, I could never have a ship like that and then to have it lost it would just suck so Ah, uh, she goes, like, go to the dilithium store, then ship equipment, then hangar. Oh, let's see. Ship equipment. Let's take a peek. Dilithium store. S space. What does she call it? Ship equipment. Ship equipment. A hangar. Wait a minute, are you saying I could put I could put fighters on my battleship? Hangar advanced delta flyers, advanced the new runabouts, typed in shuttles. Shut up. Oh, no, but that was showing you what ships are available for the carriers. Oh. Well then, never mind. That sucks. I was like, just, I was like almost happy. Yeah, see right there it says carrier. Dang it. I was like, my heart like went up for a moment and then it came back down. Like, dang it. Oh, oh well. Alright, so there's that. Yeah. All good. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Hack Benjamin, Lip Skinner, Pyromancer, who just came in or was here. I don't know. I lost track of who comes and goes. But anyway, that's it for me. It's Memorial Day. I'm going to go back to watching television and reading my D&D stuff and getting ready for, for I don't have to, have to go to bed. I don't have to be at work tomorrow till sometime later. So here's the thing. I have to work a, an odd evening shift again tomorrow, so I'm not quite sure if I'll be able to broadcast or not. I should be able to, no problem, but just in case, I might either be really late or it might not happen. just depends on how work goes. So, But anyway, it was good seeing everybody. I hope everybody enjoys their Memorial Day, if that's something you celebrate in your country. If not, have a good evening or enjoyed. It's almost 15 minutes over here so hopefully everybody had a good day and we will see you later after I push the big button of doom here and